Hey luxury travel warriors, now I love traveling to Las Vegas and judging by the number of times that I get recognized on the street and in the casinos there, it seems like you guys do too. Now I'm just thinking about booking my annual trip to Vegas probably in April, maybe early May and I've been thinking about how I can get the most value out of my trip and it makes sense to do a video about it. So here is 10 Las Vegas travel hacks that you need to know. Now, when you start looking at traveling to Las Vegas, the first thing you will notice is that the prices at hotels are actually very reasonable compared to other cities. And that's because they make a lot of money on the casinos, so they draw people in with cheaper rooms. However, you will discover that a lot of other things in the city, like dining, like tickets to shows, are very expensive, and you're probably gonna want to have some fun and spend some money in the casino too. So very quickly, you can rack up quite a lot of costs. So it's very easy to blow a lot of money in Las Vegas. And thus, the tips that I am about to give you could save you a lot. Number one, get a player's card. Now, you may have heard about something called comps in Las Vegas. Comps is short for complimentary, and this is where a resort will give you some free stuff depending on how much money you gamble, and this could range from a sweet upgrade, a free meal, maybe some free slot play, etc. But for them to know how much money you are gambling, you have to have your play tracked, and for that, you need to head to the rewards desk in the casino and get a player's card. Then, when you sit down at a slot machine, insert your card. When you sit down at a table game, give your card to the pit boss so they can track your play. Even link your card to your room and then charge everything like room service, meals, everything to your room. This way, everything will be tracked. Now it's mostly based on gambling, but the other stuff helps too. However, don't think that you have to be losing thousands of dollars in the casino to get any comps at all. It's based on something called coin in, the amount of money you put into slot machines and table games combined with your theoretical loss on those games. It's not your actual loss. So Nevada slot machines, for example, by law are required to pay out a minimum of 75% of the money that goes into them. But in reality, due to competition between different casinos and slot machine models, they actually pay out in general over 90% of the money that's put in. Thus, if you put in say $100, you might actually get $95 back or even win some money. And then you can put your winnings back in and just keep repeating the process. And over several hours, you may have had a coin in of a thousand or even two thousand dollars just from an initial deposit of a hundred dollars. You never actually had a thousand dollars in your hand, but it's just you keep cycling the money through the machines over and over again and it all adds up and that is your coin in. One point to make though is that your coin in is averaged to a daily rate. So only use your player's card if you're having a longer gambling session. If you just pop into the casino for five minutes and have a very quick couple of spins on a slot machine, for example, gambling like, you know, 50 bucks coin in, that will skew your average daily rate down. So don't do that. Don't use it for short sessions only for long sessions. Now with all games in the casino though, the house always wins. So there is a slight house edge on every game, some games more than others actually. So you can expect to lose money uh, in the long run, all right? Unless you are on a lucky winning streak or you're a card counter, in which case you risk getting possibly kicked out of the casino. I am a physicist and I've been observing this wheel for hours and running a chi-square analysis. Sir, would you come with us? But the amount of money you lose compared to the value of the comps that you get is actually quite small. I've seen people's win-loss statement where they've lost like $5,000 at gambling, but they've got $20,000 worth of comps. So that's actually $20,000 worth of stuff at a 75% discount. But if you want to gamble with minimal losses, you have to play the games perfectly. And that is our next point. Number two, learn gambling. The odds on many games in Las Vegas are just under 50-50 with just a slight edge to the house if you play the games perfectly. For example, if you play blackjack with perfect basic strategy, the house wins just over 50% of the time. So you can actually expect to get 99.5% of the money you gamble back if you gamble long term. In the short term, there can be wild swings to either side. And when you add the value of the comps you receive for gambling thousands of dollars, 
you actually come out on top. But for that, you need to play the game perfectly, and that means you have to memorize the blackjack basic strategy tables by heart. I also practiced blackjack with an iPhone app that I downloaded from the App Store, and if you do that before you go to Vegas, this will give you confidence when you actually get there, because when you see that the amount of money you lose over the long term isn't actually that much in the app, you'll feel better about putting a few hundred dollars down on the blackjack table. On YouTube, the channel Blackjack Apprenticeship is a great channel to watch for knowledge about basic strategy and the odds of blackjack in general, especially knowing which blackjack variants to avoid because not all blackjack games are created equal. In addition to blackjack, craps and roulette can also have very good odds if you play them with perfect strategy, and they can be a lot of fun for the beginner gambler. You can watch YouTube videos on them and also download practice apps for your phone that you can play through before you arrive in Vegas. In addition to that, many of the casinos actually offer free gambling classes. The Venetian, the Luxor, and the Excalibur, to name just a few, all have these gambling classes where they'll teach you the games and let you practice with fake chips uh, for a few rounds before you lay real money down on the table. I'll put a link to a list of all the casinos that offer these classes in the description below. If you want to try slots, the Win Slots app is another great free app that you can download for your phone and you can try slots with fake money on a lot of the actual real slot machines that exist in Las Vegas. Now, no matter whether you're doing it for the comps or you just want to make your money go further in the casino, watching YouTube videos, downloading practice apps and attending gambling classes in person is going to be a great investment. But maybe there are some other ways to get free stuff without putting your money on the line. Well, you could get up to 12 free stocks for opening an account and depositing any amount of money with the Zero Commission brokerage app Weeble, the sponsor of today's video. You get two free stocks just for opening an account and then up to 10 more free stocks when you deposit any amount of money. And that money obviously remains yours. You're not giving that to them. It's your money. You can do what you want with it. The minimum value for this is $34 and the maximum value if you luck out is over $30,000. Luck of the draw, what you get. Link for that deal is in the description section below. I think it only goes until the end of this month. So be quick if you want it. But back to casinos. And that's our next hack. Number three, casino and hotel status. Now, there's another way of getting things comped, such as, for example, free parking, which could save you $15 every time you go in and out of the parking lot at the Bellagio, for example. Waived resort fees, which could save you up to $50 per day at some resorts. And then things like room upgrades, free meals, VIP lines at the buffets, etc. And that is casino or hotel status. For example, if you go stay at the Resorts World property on the Las Vegas Strip, the three hotels at that property are all operated by Hilton. So if you have a high level of Hilton status, you can get a load of free stuff. For example, I got a free upgrade to a strip view king suite for having Hilton Diamond status. But Hilton Diamond status is actually easy to get. You just sign up for the Hilton Aspire credit card. Now that card does have a $450 annual fee, but the value of the 150,000 points welcome bonus and the several travel credits that you get each year far outweigh the fee that you pay. Then you can also match statuses. So for example, if you have status with Hyatt, you can match that to MGM. And that's great because MGM owns a lot of the best properties on the Las Vegas Strip for for example, the Bellagio, the Aria, the MGM Grand, etc. If you get the Wyndham Rewards Business Earner credit card for $95 per year, that gives you Wyndham Diamond status that you can then match to Caesars Diamond. A great perk of Caesars Diamond, by the way, is the $100 annual celebration dinner. You don't even need to be staying at a Caesars property to use it. Let's say you stay at the Bellagio by MGM, where well, you can just walk over to Caesars Palace and go to Gordon Ramsay and you can get $100 off the check. Anyway, I have a whole video on how to do the whole Vegas status match thing. It looks like this. I'll also put it on the end card of this video for you to check out. But what if you don't have any other hotels, high level statuses, you don't want to get a new credit card to get that status and you have no other way of matching them. Is there another way that you can get VIP benefits at hotels without status? 
Well, yes, there is. Number four, book through the American Express Fine Hotels and Resorts collection. If you have the American Express Platinum card, you can book through the Amex Fine Hotels and Resorts collection. There's loads of Vegas hotels listed in there. Not only is it a great way of getting extra VIP benefits at these hotels, like room upgrades, etc., but the Amex Platinum also has a $200 credit for prepaid hotels booked through the Fine Hotels Resorts collection and also the hotel collection. In Vegas, $200 could probably pay for one night in a five-star hotel. But booking through fine hotels and resorts will also give you things like room upgrades, free breakfast, a dining credit for $100 at many of the best hotels in Vegas. Like at the Bellagio, for example, where I got a fountain view room, free breakfast, and a $100 food credit. But what if you want a room for free? Number five, use credit card points and free nights. Now, credit card points and hotel free nights from credit cards are a great way of getting free hotel stays in Vegas or in any other city. But the casino hotels in Vegas are not the usual companies you would expect when thinking of co-branded credit cards. The normal ones would be Marriott, Hyatt, Hilton, and IHG. But there are partnerships, so you can book MGM properties with Hyatt points, for example. And you can get 60,000 Hyatt points for signing up for the world of Hyatt credit card from Chase. You can book the Venetian with IHG points or using the free nights from the IHG credit card. And all the hotels at Resorts World, like we said, are operated by Hilton, so you can use Hilton points or Hilton free nights for nights at those properties. Just one word of caution though, is that because the hotels in Las Vegas tend to be a bit cheaper, you might not actually get as good value for your points and free nights as you would in other cities. Now you might not care about that, but it's something to keep in mind. Now there are a load of hotel credit cards like we have mentioned, where you can get welcome bonuses that will pay for several nights in a hotel. For example, the IHG Rewards Premier Credit Card from Chase currently has a historic high welcome bonus of 175,000 IHG points. That could get you about a week stay at the Venetian. I'll put a link to that card in the description if you want to learn more about it. Moving on. Number six, know your hotels to avoid disappointment. Now, not every hotel in Vegas is a luxury property, and some of the lower-end hotels that are often promoted alongside the luxury ones that even have impressive-looking photos are really quite down market. People complain that they're run down, the rooms are in need of repair, they're dirty, and there's even crime in the area. Just because the hotel is shaped like a medieval castle or an Egyptian pyramid doesn't mean that your room is going to be clean. So I'll put on screen a list of the major names and where they fit in in the sort of high, medium, and low-end categories. And personally, I would only stay at the high-end properties. At the very lowest end, we have Circus Circus, which is a sad, dilapidated, clown-themed, creepy hotel that is supposedly haunted. There have been an unusually high number of murders in the rooms at Circus Circus, and there are stories of people being robbed of their gambling winnings in the corridors. So this is somewhere that I would stay away from, even though the room rates are as low as $25 per night. Number seven, you don't need a car. So check out this footage shot from a plane taking off from Las Vegas airport. You realize that Las Vegas Strip and all its casinos are actually right next to the airport. There's the Luxor, the New York, the MGM Grand, the Bellagio, Aria, Cosmopolitan, etc. So an Uber or taxi from the airport to your hotel is actually a very quick ride. And once you're there, you can ask yourself, do you really need to rent a car? If you're staying on the Las Vegas Strip, especially mid-strip in the area around the Bellagio, the Aria, Cosmopolitan, Paris, etc., there are so many dining options and attractions within walking distance of your hotel. There are also monorails that link up some of the hotels, like this one that links the Bellagio and the Aria, and there's actually another monorail that goes pretty much the whole length of the Strip. There are some hotels like the Resorts World, where if you were staying there, you probably would want to rent a car just because the area of town it's in is a bit out the way, run down, and it's also next to the dilapidated horror show that is Circus Circus. But if where you're staying and most of the attractions you want to visit are in that mid-strip area, I would say that you really don't need a car. And there's also a load of free attractions within walking distance that you can check out. And that's our next point. Number eight, take advantage of free attractions. Now, Vegas can be expensive, and although you may have allocated money in your budget to go to a show, 
gamble in the casino or eat at a ridiculously expensive restaurant like the Expot where they have Wagyu beef that's like $50 a mouthful, you may not be wanting to part with even more money in between, but you still need to fill up that time between those few expensive things that you've come to experience. Now going to the hotel pool is an obvious choice for something to do in between attractions that you've planned because that is obviously free, but there are a load of other free attractions that you can check out as well. The conservatory at the Bellagio is a great place to check out. They change the exhibition five times a year. This is the one for Chinese New Year 2022 when I was visiting. Then staying at the Bellagio, you have the Bellagio Fountains. It's a very impressive water show that runs every half hour in the afternoons and every 15 minutes after 7 p.m. Then you could walk a little way down the strip to the Mirage for the Volcano Show. This one happens on the hour every hour from 7 to 11 p.m. Get ready for lava and fireballs right on the Las Vegas Strip. Now this one will eventually be going away because Hard Rock Hotel bought the Mirage and they're gonna stick a massive guitar there right bang on the top of where the volcano is now. But it looks like the volcano will be staying until the end of 2023. Then you have the Forum Shops at Caesars Palace, which is a great place to walk around even if you don't buy anything. You'll be wowed by the Roman style architecture. They have their signature round escalators, which are a really cool experience. And there is a show here too, the Fall of Atlantis, which is a fire and water show right there in the mall. And these attractions are all free of charge and walking distance if you're staying at mid strip, like we said. You don't need a car. Then there are some cool things to check out that are a little bit further away, like the Fremont Street Experience, which is downtown Las Vegas. But perhaps you want to get out of the city altogether. Well, there are plenty of either free or affordable things to do within an hour or so's drive of the city. Number nine, get out of the city. Now Las Vegas sits in a beautiful area of the country with desert and mountains surrounding it. And if you did decide to rent a car, there are plenty of state and national parks very close to the city. The most obvious ones are gonna be Death Valley National Park to the west and the Grand Canyon to the east, which are both approximately a two hour drive. But there are also some that are a lot closer, like the Red Rock National Conservation Area with its 13 mile loop. That one is only 20 minutes from the center of the Las Vegas Strip. Then you have the Valley of Fire State Park. This one's about 45 minutes to the northeast. Here you'll find hiking trails, slot canyons, and the famous Fire Wave Rocks. Check out this footage I shot with my phone. It's hard to believe that's only 40 minutes from the Las Vegas Strip. I have a whole vlog about this one on my vlog channel. It looks like this. Uh, you can check it out. I'll put it on the end card of this video if you're interested. Then there are also numerous ghost towns in the desert and mountains surrounding Las Vegas. I checked them out with a Lamborghini, but you can actually get to them with any car and they're generally free to walk around. Although you may want to stop for lunch or buy some souvenirs. Another attraction that you might want to check out that's just 30 minutes from the Las Vegas Strip is Seven Magic Mountains. It's an art installation that provides a great location for selfies and it's free. In general, getting out of the city and into some areas of natural beauty is a great way to complement what you're doing on the Las Vegas Strip. You'll feel recharged and ready to go when you get back into the city for the casinos and the nightlife in the evening. And now for our final Las Vegas travel hack. Number 10, take advantage of weekdays. Now I cannot stress this enough, from flights to hotels to dining options, everything is quieter and cheaper during the week. Let's start with flights. Now the whole of LA goes to Vegas every weekend. So if you fly there from LA or from New York or from any other big city for that matter on a Friday and then you fly home on a Sunday night or a Monday, expect your plane to be packed. By contrast, I flew from New York to Vegas on a Monday when everyone else was coming back and I had an entire row to myself in economy. I actually lay down and got several hours of sleep. I even felt sorry for the people in first class who had these big recliners, but they couldn't get that full 180 degree sleep experience. Then with hotels, you'll also notice that the prices are far lower on weekdays. Look at this calendar for the Venetian. You have $120 per night on Wednesday, Thursday, and then on Friday, it shoots up to $300 per night, over double the price. This Saturday in May is over $600. You'll also find that weekdays that are holidays or have events like sports games, Formula One, etc., 
are double, triple, even quadruple or more the price of regular weekdays. And if you're using the IHG free nights at the Venetian, you'll find that the cheaper weekdays are the only nights you're actually allowed to use those free night certificates on. And just in general, there'll be less crowds, more free seats at the blackjack table, and just all around a better experience if you go to Vegas during the week. All right, guys, that is the video for today. Leave your comments about this below. What do you think? Have you got any more tips? Maybe we can do a part two. Don't forget, you can also get up to 12 free stocks from the sponsor of today's video, the broker app Weeble in the links below. The deal only runs till the end of the month, so be quick if you want it. Please subscribe if you're new, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.